As an aviation safety professional, I've seen firsthand what can happen when a pilot doesn't take an aircraft anomaly seriously. And I know a lot of pilots might look at these maintenance-related accidents and think to themselves, well, well, that would never happen to me. I'd never put myself in that situation. But personally, as an aircraft owner and a pilot, when I look at these accident scenarios, I can completely understand how some of these pilots found themselves in these situations. I think that a lot of pilots forget that the only way that their airplane can communicate a potential problem to them is through subtle indications like an oil pressure anomaly or a flight control fitting backing off. And I think it takes a lot of discipline for pilots to look for these types of changes and recognize them, take them seriously and act on them when they see them. Um, let's face it, it's not convenient to discontinue a flight, leave an airplane out somewhere, rent a car to get home. I think that a lot of pilots are inclined to try to get the airplane back to its home base and have the problem looked at there, but unfortunately sometimes that's too late. I think a primary risk factor for these type of accidents is a lack of vigilance on the part of the pilot for monitoring the aircraft for changes. It may be a lack of understanding of what they might be seeing. In a lot of the maintenance related accidents that we see, the airplanes were often giving some sort of indication that something wasn't quite right. But the pilots either didn't detect the change or didn't understand the significance of what they were seeing. I was the report writer for the tragic accident at the Reno Air Races in 2011 that killed 11 people and injured dozens of others. And I know that's not a typical GA operation, but the lesson does apply for all pilots. The airworthiness investigator on that accident found that the airplane was talking to the pilot, that it was giving subtle indications that something structurally wasn't quite right. Back in 2004, I was the investigator in charge of an accident involving a Smith Aerostar that the pilot had been having problems with. He was away from his home base, and the maintenance shop at the airport where he had landed didn't have time to look at the plane. He decided to fly a short hop to an airport 12 miles away, but on takeoff, the airplane lost power in one engine, and the pilot lost control of it and crashed. Both he and his passenger lost their lives. In 2008, one of my colleagues investigated an accident in which the pilot was killed following a loss of engine power in his Beach 36 in Knight IMC. That pilot also had chosen to fly the airplane after the local maintenance shop told him that they wouldn't be able to look at it until the next morning. There are at least five things you can do to avoid being involved in this type of accident. Number one, resist external pressures. Refuse to allow external pressures such as saving time or money or the fear of disappointing passengers to influence you to attempt or continue a flight in conditions in which you are not comfortable. Two, address mechanical problems before the flight. Listen to what your aircraft is telling you and remember that shortcuts on the ground can cost you dearly in flight. It's better to handle a problem on the ground rather than risk having to deal with an emergency in the air. Three, stick to the maintenance flight plan. Remember the purpose of a maintenance diagnostic flight and stick to the plan. Be prepared for problems and don't bring passengers. Four, verify maintenance work. Ensure that the aircraft performs correctly after maintenance work. If any indication of a problem persists, additional maintenance or even a second opinion might be in order. And five, be prepared for in-flight emergencies. Should an in-flight emergency occur, your ability to swiftly and successfully execute your aircraft's emergency procedures can mean the difference between life and death. Get training and practice so you'll be prepared. What I would hope that pilots could learn from these accidents is that you really need to pay attention to the little things. Even catastrophic problems can start out small and progress fast. If something's not quite right with your airplane, don't talk yourself into believing what you want to hear or doing what's most convenient. I faced that once with my own airplane. Uh, two years ago, I made the very difficult decision to ground it and because of this expense involved, that airplane hasn't flown since. But I'd rather be here talking about the uh, disappointment of having my aircraft ownership dream uh, transform into a maintenance nightmare than ever risk having to face what these pilots have gone through and the heartbreak that their friends, family, and communities are still going through today.